Hello, my name is Kevin and this is the Love Decanters channel. So I've just come back from a trip to Norway, um, to Oslo in fact, and while I was there I had a bit of spare time that I wasn't expecting to have and I was able to have a walk around and I found an antique centre that had loads of glass, loads. So obviously I'm going to go in, I asked them if I could film, they were very kind, very kind indeed, they let me film as I liked in there. Um, the antique centre is called, I've got it written down here, Hedge Hogan's Antique and Brook. And I will put this name and a link to their website in the description. So if you're an antique, if you're a glass collector and you ever find yourself in Oslo, it's a place to go. They have masses of glass, masses. You'll see in the film. So I have to admit, in fact, once I start filming, you see me filming on location, uh, I admit up front, I have no idea what I'm doing. I don't know very much about Scandinavian glass um, and particularly not about Norwegian glass. So uh, as I go through the various clips that I've done, um, I know that I've made various mistakes because the next day I got introduced to someone who does know about antique, um, who knows about Norwegian glass and was showing me his collection and uh, I realised how many mistakes I made the day before. So I will be cutting into this with me um, talking, picking out all the terrible mistakes I've made. Um, yeah, and also there's some things that I can also show you that are in books as well as I'm going through. Um, so yeah, it, it it's very interesting because if you're in the UK, you're going to see a lot of things that you're going to go, well, I always thought that was always UK, but it's not. There's so much stuff that's made in Norway that is just like our stuff, just like it. So, yeah, very interesting from that point of view. Um, and also, th there was a few things that I thought were from, well, France in particular. That was pointing, oh yeah, this is from France. And I'm, and I'm finding out afterwards, the next day, in fact, that no, 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 they were making this in Norway too. So... I, I will cut in at those points and um, say, yeah, this was made in Norway. So, okay. So I hope you enjoy this. It's, it's a bit, it's quite interesting. Hello, I'm here in Oslo at the um, Hedge Hogan's Antique and Brook. I hope I've pronounced that correctly. And um, I've been in for a quick look around and they have a lot of glass and even better, they've given me permission to go in and do a little bit of filming and show you uh, some of the glass. I have, uh, how can I say this? This is not my area of expertise. Um, so yeah, I, I know some Scandinavian glass and I'll point out a few interesting things. I know it more as, general, as a generality as opposed to knowing uh, who the exact names and makers and etc, etc. But um, yeah, it's going to be fun because there is a lot of glass in there. So um, I'll now switch and go, go in the um, in the centre and have a look. So the first thing I saw when I came in um, was this rather iconic decanter here. Um, this is a home guard one. Um, I think it's 1950s or 60s. I can't remember who the maker is. Um, yeah, even the price, that's a very decent price, even for England. So yeah, this is a, a good place. Um, there's also this green gluck gluck with um, some pewter on it. Yeah, I don't know who that is. It's probably uh, Hadland or Home Guard. So here I am again showing you, um, I've shown you it before, Miller's 20th Century Glass by Andy McConnell. And within it, yes, the very decanter we saw, um, 1930, uh, mold blown, liquor, blah, 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 produced 1930 to 36. And um, it says you get matching glasses. This is um, designed by uh, Jacob bang for home guard so yeah there it was i mean he's priced it here 200 pounds i think that's a bit high but it does put the, the sort of like 40 pound in the shop into perspective so yeah that was cheap so here i have something i don't see much in england there's a table full of decanters and jugs and things um the thing that stuck out to me here was there's a couple of uh magna gluck glucks they're very nice. I think they're better than the um, 
than the HomePod ones because they're made with the half post method where they've double dipped the glass. Um, and this one has very kindly announced itself with a label. So yeah, that's nice. Here's something from France. Um, I think this is probably made by Le Grasse. The enamel on it. Yeah, they're not renowned for making super quality, as you can see. But yeah, it's funny that it's here in Norway. Yeah, and the next day I find out that it's not funny that it's, that it's here in Norway because they were making this kind of wear in Norway. So I've always thought it was French. Everybody on eBay says it's made by Le Grasse. I don't have any book references for it. So I just thought, believe that, but um, clearly not. And I do know um, the, the, the ones that I saw the next day were made by Hadland and Hadland were exporting to the UK. So maybe a lot of what we see, this enameled glass that everybody says is French, may also be Norwegian as well. So yeah, interesting. This is very interesting. This is Cruet here. Um, this would be a early to mid 19th century one. You see this kind in the UK. Um, the feet are different, but it's basically wood with lacquer on it. Uh, it might be paper mache, I don't know. I'd have to get it up, up close, but it's right across the table. It's difficult to get to. Um, and it has, I don't know if any of those bottles are original. They're, they don't look to be from quite the same service and there's only three holes in it so yeah but that's quite an interesting thing a bit of bohemian glass here so something all the way from the Czech Republic flashed uh, probably um, late 19th century something else away from its home um, these are a couple of um, Baccarat um, Remy Martin um, brandy bottles at least I think they are. They look like them. Here we go. Here's a late 18th, early 19th century decanter, unfortunately. Uh, I can't see if I can get my finger into the picture. There we go. Someone's chopped the top off, so you only got two rings. It might have only had two rings, but there should be a pouring lip at the top there. Um, it's a bit, it's very like, like the Irish ones, only when you look underneath, you can see, as I was showing you in the, um, in another video I did, there's a pressed um, star into the base, and um, the Irish ones are not like that. There's also this, this looks to be a 18th century um, firing glass, that's quite nice. And um, yeah, here's one of these, um, little diamond soda glasses. So these were made over a long period of time, so it's very difficult to, to tell how old it is. Um, it's probably 19th century though. Um, I don't know what they call these here. We call them gin pigs. I don't know how old that is. I think they were making repos of these until quite recently here. And then, yeah, the star in this little cabinet here is this. Uh, 18th century uh, wine glass with the cotton twist stem. Very nice. Might have to get it out and ping it, find out whether it's lead or um, soda glass, but it's still a very nice glass. So I had, had a, uh, quite a long chat with the owner of the antique shop afterwards, and um, yeah, that glass, it is a soda glass. So it is a continental one. He thinks it's local, so he would know best. So yeah, not an English one. Looks, everything about it says, it looks very English, but I presume if you picked it up, it would just be half, you know, quarter of the way or whatever. So yeah, you'd know straight away and it wouldn't ping either. So yeah, I didn't need to get it out in the end. I was told that it was actually soda glass. There's three of these little drinking glasses here. They're really cute, um, with little men on them, drinking. Um, yeah, they're too much for me there. It's the kind of thing I could carry home, but they're 22 pounds each. Um, and that's quite a lot. 
compared to what you probably find them for in the UK. And in the same cabinet, I found um, three more tall glasses, cocktail glasses, and um, with the same kind of men on. There's a chap being kicked down the stairs, hat falling off, really nice. Another man uh, drunk, and I can't see what the more at the back. There's a man. Uh, I think his kite's blowing away or something. There's something strange going on in that one. But yeah, but still. 350 kroner each, that's still over 30 pounds a glass. The next day I was told that these glasses are Swedish and the reason uh, they can tell they're Swedish in Norway is because the ones, the similar ones that are made in Norway, uh, they're wearing, wearing bowl hats and the Swedish ones, they're wearing top hats. Yeah, who knew, who knew? Here we go, they've got masons in um, Norway, I didn't know. And um, these are really heavy duty um, drinking glasses. There's a few, there's a set of them at the back there. I think there's six tall ones and this one short one. But they're, they're over a hundred pounds each. And uh, yeah, that's way too much for me. And um, but they're very nice, very nice. I think they're post-war, the um, the cutting looks like it's uh, acid polished, so probably post-war. Here's a, what looks to be a 18th century drinking flask um, made with a half post method with um, Spanish cutting. Really nice. A uh, half post method means it's Scandinavian at least. And I reckon it really is 18th century. There's some quizzling. Can you see that in the the glass looks a bit sparkly there at the side. That's quizzling. That's the glass starting to break down. Um, and that usually indicates slightly faulty manufacturing methods. And, and it also takes a long time for that to really take effect and look like that. So, yeah, that looks entirely right. Unfortunately, the, the price is over £200. So that's probably entirely right too for here. Kabao, look at all this. Look at all this glass. You used to be able to see things like this in the UK. It's very rare to find sort of like a big pile of glasses like this. And um, I'll, I'll get in closer and have a look at a few. But there's a real mixed bag of ages and periods. A lot of it's relatively modern, but decent quality. There's another one over there. And I think if you look over here in the distance, you can see there's actually a table full. Here we go. Here's a um, set of four. Um, Champagne flutes. So these are made um, like the early 19th century ones that we have in the UK. But I do know companies like Hadland were making these um, here in Norway, were making these much later. So here, you can't tell, I have given it a quick ping. They are lead crystal, but they are um, 40 pounds a glass. That's 450 kroner. So yeah, that's too much. Even if they were. Um, early 19th century English ones, that's double price. Here's a couple of glasses with um, folded foot. Um, I don't know how old these are. I mean, they're probably local. They look, looking at the quality of the glass, they look like they're soda glass. Um, they might be 18th century, they might be early 19th century. Um, they're one over 70 pounds each, so they, they obviously think they're good. Um, there's also a nice, um, spirit flask in the back there it's made with the half post method and they want um, a good way north of 200 pounds for that so that's quite nice but yeah still too much for me here's something interesting it looks like a 18th century patty bowl um, it's got a folded rim and uh, a broken pontle on the base there is some wear on it, but not a lot. It it looks kind of right, but then there's not enough surface wear. Um, the base wear is, is is not particularly heavy. There's like a little ring of it. Just can just about see it there. But the whole surface should be really worn, and it looks kind of nice and clean. So I think this is a reproduction. And how much do they want for it? It's yeah, 
just over 20 pounds. So yeah, as a reproduction, that's very nice because I'm sure if it was an 18th century one, it would be 10 times that. Look at these two monster chargers. I have no idea who made these. Um, they obviously think they're good because they're asking over 100 pounds each one. Um, and they're, they're really monster. They must be about 18 inches across. Yeah. No crystal. Um, I wish I knew who had made them. There's a bit of wear on this one. So these have been around a while. Yeah, very nice. Don't see things um, this size usually. And there's also bowls here. So I don't know if these bowls are supposed to go with them. Um, and then over here, there's this bowl here with the um, little, if I can clean that up a bit, little Viking boat on it. Let's see if I can not drop the camera or the, the phone. No, I can't turn it over. Can I turn it over? And uh, there's no marks. Oh. It's probably Magna or Hadland, um, but it might be one of the Swedish makers. Look at this, super Scandinavian. I don't know who made it, um, whether it's Swedish or Norwegian, but yeah, really nice. I'll, this is the kind of thing that they do. It's kind of not complex, it's, it's quite big, you can see, you can see my hand there. Um, just glass poured into a mold but so stylish so stylish yeah I like that and the price is about 30 pounds so yeah, it's probably a bargain but I doubt I'll be able to get it home in one piece so what did you think I was gonna go all the way to Norway oh, and um, come back empty-handed no this came home with me I managed to find some cardboard and um, came back the next day and it came home in my hand luggage. Um, I think it's, I've not found a book reference for it, but I'm pretty certain it's Home Guard made by, Ber designed by Bertil Valen. Um, it's very interesting how it's made. So I think it's called a sand mold somehow. I don't know how that works, um, but look at this here. So you can see, look, there's a join here. It's like poured into different sections and there's like this bit here crosses over this bit and so yeah it, it, they must have just poured it as they were kind of like trailing it around um so freehand i presume so yeah not it looks simple but then <clears throat> in reality harder to make than it looks i think um but yeah very nice very scandy I didn't buy it for me because this is, I'm a tableware guy. This is art glass, proper art glass. I bought this for my wife. Um, she's seen some Bertel Ballon stuff before and I knew this was like it. So I, I dished out and brought it home for my wife. It's very nice though. It's very stylish, very Swedish or Scandinavian, I should say, because Home Guard's in Denmark. But yeah, very Scandi. Um, I kind of like it a lot, but it's not for me. Um, and it's not what I not what I really collect, but yeah, it came home. There's no escaping these uh, glass fish; they're everywhere. Um, people say they're made they're Murano. Um, they're usually made in Romania. I don't know. This one doesn't look quite the same as some of the others. The fit, the tail looks like it's made differently, so it might be local. Hello. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, they were very kind in Antique and Brook, and um, they put me on to um, a local collector who they said has the biggest private collection of glass in Norway. And he very kindly invited me to his house and allowed me to film. And so there will be another video of that. And, and boy, did I learn a lot the next day. Yeah really knows his stuff. His stuff's all nicely laid out. Well, not all of it, because there's just so much of it. But um, yeah, that, that was great. Uh, so watch out for the next video that's coming after this one, because it will be that visit. Um, and I'll reiterate, if you're in or ever in Oslo, this place, and I will put the, the name and website 
in the description. Um, this is a place to go, really good. Um, I did have a go around the charity shops and the prices were it, not cheap, not cheap like UK charity shops, but at the same time, they may have been cheap, but I didn't know what I was looking at. So there looked to be some good quality things, but um, yeah, I wasn't certain. And um, and I wasn't brave enough to ask if I could film in there either. But um, yeah, definitely go to this place if you go to Norway. It's a great place. So, uh, And remember, uh, please like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this.